Back in 1970, I was graduating from Bible school, Winkler. Dave Lowen, director of Camp Barnes, came to recruit. And that was uh, where I started uh, my time at camp back in 1970. And I followed a year, a little more than a year later because we got married in fall of 71. I'd worked at other camps before, so the idea of camping was nothing new and we figured we could do it as a team. We did for four years, two years. Two years favorite memory. Uh, I enjoyed the walk in the woods, down the trails, enjoying the um, the beauty of the camp and also interacting with uh, the campers and staff. I have a lot of good memories but I think one of the best is still the time that I spent working in the camp office with Lily Lowen at that time, uh, working at the outdoor education preparing the first manual. Well, I can say that working also at promoting the Cleanathon was exciting. It was a good kickstart into public speaking for me because we went into the public schools talking to middle-aged students and promoting the idea of helping to clean the city of Winnipeg and they could earn uh, gifts and a lot of us. It helped put Winnipeg, or Camp Arnis, I think, on a much bigger part of the map. It gave the camp a really good um, reputation and gave the kids an introduction to Camp Arnis. So that was a neat way of introducing them. And it was it was exciting, it was challenging, but it was fun too. I think one of the biggest faith challenges for me was, or simply a challenge, which I came as a matter of, or took as a matter of faith, was how the year that I was given a cabin full of deaf mute girls, or mostly deaf girls, they were able to speak somewhat. And um, Sister Fiola came with them, Dawn Laboon was our waterfront staff that year, and uh, but it was just really beautiful to get involved with those girls. They were so accepting, so gracious, but I needed a lot of wisdom to try to communicate with them because I knew this was a very special week for them, and I wanted them to know as to learn about as much about God as they possibly could and learn how his his love for them would make a, lot, a lifelong difference. After the one summer at camp, uh, we were married. Um, I had no no plans at that point, but one of the staff in the camp came along and uh, towards the end of summer and uh, directed me to university, uh, helped me get involved in the studies. And with that, I was able to finish my degree and end up going into uh, teaching which was my career for 31 years. That was Don Isaac, Don, right? Don Isaac, But yes. there was another camp staff who encouraged you. Yes, so one of the staff came along and uh, gifted me with some cash, uh, just like that. That was a confirmation from God to move in that direction. Well, for one, it's, it's much too big a job, too big a responsibility and an opportunity for any small group of people. I think we all need to work together um, and we've seen the, the value of camping as a ministry of building into young lives, children and youth, and but even adults, and uh, helping them to understand God's majesty and His goodness in, in the beautiful creation that He's given. And the, the camp is really um, an entr a trust that the original owners and, and the original dreamers helped to bring to fruition and it was all because of God's work so it'd be a shame not to keep it going because we believe that he's got great plans for it. I think over the years that I was in the public school system as well as involved in uh, church leadership uh, many times I heard of uh, children who had gone to camp and uh, the experience they'd had there uh, learning about God, uh, growing in God and going back and uh, just becoming mature people, and that's, that's important. On a personal note, we've also benefited from the senior camp. That's uh, something that may not have been envisioned right at the start, but we've had some really good times there making 
new friends and re-establishing friendships that have started years ago. So, so just another aspect of the multifaceted ministry of Camp Artists. <laughs>